Well, it's time for another tutorial. This is a tutorial that will be quick and to the point, hopefully, but uh, this is something I get a lot of questions about. So um, this video will focus just on the mixing of hydrocal. And real important to know that hydrocal is part of the plaster family. It is the highest end of the plaster family in strength. So in the plaster category, we have all the way down at the bottom, we have plaster of Paris, and then gradually going upwards through like uh, number one molding, number one casting plaster and all that, all the way up to hydrocal is the strongest of the plasters. So that's what we're gonna get into mixing today. And it's really important to know that the techniques that I'm gonna show you for mixing hydrocal, these apply to all of the plasters. If they don't apply, this technique does not apply to hydrostone or ultracal 30 or any stone material. And that's a real important distinction and I'll go over some of the finer points of that as we move along. Now first of all, I'm going to be starting with a with my water. This is room temperature water and I only have about this much in the bucket. I typically recommend starting with about a third of the water that you're going to need. If you're making mother molds and you're trying to keep them really thin, uh, a rule of thumb I heard ages ago, which I, I tend to go a little bit above this, is typically about a quart of water per square foot that you want to cover if you're making about half inch thick mother molds. Again, I'm always nervous about sticking to that, so I usually add a little bit to that, but that's some, a good number to have kicking around in your head. So this is room temperature water, and one thing about the water, I've, you'll notice I have an extra, uh, an extra container of water here. This is a almost full bucket of clean water, and this is for washing my hands, washing off tools, anything like that that I need to do. I've got clean water or extra water, if necessary, over to the side. Now, water, remember that water is one of the chemicals. So water is a chemical. The quality of the water will change the output of what you're making. So if you're using mineral rich water, you may get different results than uh, city water. So important to be aware of that. May not necessarily be bad, but it might speed up your set time if you're working with water that has a lot of salt in it. Now, the, the process of mixing hydrocal what we first wanna do is sift our hydrocal into our plaster. Now the ratio is roughly two parts dry plaster to one part water by volume, and that is very rough. That is not a hard, fast ratio. You can vary that a lot. Unlike a lot of other materials, there is a, a fair amount of latitude on hydrocal. Now when you're mixing this in, you want to sift this in to still water and just continue to sift this in. Now, obviously you could do this with a scoop or a mixing cup or something. You don't have to do this by hand. Um, I like to do it by hand just because I can feel if there's any lumps or anything I need to sift out as I'm dispensing it here. And I can make sure that I spread it all around the top of the water. Now, here is the, the one of the main things that I see people do with hydrocal, and again, this is totally different than UltraCal 30 or Hydrostone. But one of the common mistakes that people will make is when they're, as they're adding their plaster, or, and I'm gonna say plaster just generically throughout, uh, when they're adding their dry hydrocal plaster, whatever, is they start mixing it and then they continue to add. Now, you don't wanna do that, and here's why. When you're sifting this in like this into still water without stirring it, the reaction doesn't start until you agitate your plaster or start stirring it. If you uh, just let it sift in like this and let it naturally absorb into the water, the reaction takes a long time to start. So you have plenty of time to get this sifted in. And what this is gonna work out to is, uh, the way this works is our water will naturally absorb all of the dry plaster that it can. You'll notice it's taking longer and longer to soak into the water now. And when we start getting this, what's called a dry lake bed effect on the top, that's how we know that the water has hit its saturation point and has enough dry plaster in, mixed into it. Or not mixed in yet. But, so now you'll see here that I've got the top covered and it's taking a lot longer for this to soak in. We're gonna give that a little bit of time, but you see a few little wet spots there, we're gonna hit those. 
And again, this is why it's so nice to, to do this by hand, so we have a lot more control over that. Now, we're gonna let that sit and watch this for a little bit and you'll see it'll start slowly absorb that in, but it'll hit a point where it stops absorbing or it'll be really slow to absorb the water. This is exactly where you want it, right here. You'll see that that is the dry lake bed effect that you see happening there. Now, if you let this sit for say 20, 30 minutes, it's gonna soak in all the way to where it'll be like, uh, like white water on the top. And that's okay if you let it sit there for a while, but just know, don't add any more. This is, this is perfect right here. Now, this is the part that's very counterintuitive. The longer this sits, the less mixing we have to do. So it's really tempting at this point to jump in and stick your hand in and start mixing it up. And you can do that, but the longer this sits, the less mixing you have to do. And the smoother the consistency will be because it will naturally soak up all the, uh, the plaster into the water and rather than having to do it mechanically. Now, here's another important detail. So first, first real important rule that I wanna really drill in is do not stir, do not agitate the water with your hand, with a stir stick, anything, until you have all of your plaster in your bucket absorbing into the water. Then you can start mixing. Then the other thing is, remember the amount of mixing that you do can speed that up drastically. So if we use our hand we, and do a minimal amount of mixing, that's gonna give us a longer working time. So if you're doing mother molds, if you're doing large layups with plaster, if you need as much working time as possible, then ideally you wanna let that sit as long as possible and then just gently mix it a little bit and then go to town using your batch. If you want that to set up really fast, if you're casting up hands or something, or if you're using it in a way where you need that to go off fast, then the more friction, the more agitation, the faster that's gonna go. So now you'll notice that's soaked in a lot more. We have that nice dry lake bed effect. That is a nice, that, that's exactly what we're looking for right there. So once we've hit that point, we're ready to start mixing up. But again, remember, the longer it sits like that, the, the more working time we'll have and the less uh, lumps we'll have. But for the sake of the video, so we can go ahead and move on, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing. Now this is where, really important, where we, we need our clean water on standby because since I'm gonna be using my hands for mixing, I need to be able to clean these. And the last thing you wanna do is wash your hands in your sink and totally destroy your plumbing because that is exactly what will happen if you do that. So I'm gonna reach in here and mix that up and you'll see most of that's gone into solution on its own. So it does not take much mixing. And again, this is one of those things where using your hands is really nice just because you can feel down in the corner of the bucket. You can tell when everything's mixed up really good. And again, it does not take much work at all to get that stirred up. And what you'll have at this point is the consistency of like, uh, one of my customers once referred to this as lobster bisque. And I, that gives me exactly no frame of reference whatsoever. So I'll say cream of chicken soup. Um, but that's about the consistency right there. So it's a little bit on the runny side, but uh, it's fairly thick. And this is ideal for pouring into molds. If you're pouring up a head cast or a hand cast or any kind of uh, positive into alginate, this is the consistency you want. And also real important to remember that with uh, HydroCal, the thickness gradually increases as it starts to set. So there's that cure profile of it starts out really runny like this and it gradually gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. It'll turn into a mud-like consistency right before it starts to set up. Now for your edification, at the end of this video, I will put a link to our two-piece HydroCal mold. So be sure to check that out if you're unfamiliar with uh, the process of making a plaster mold. That is a good crash course in the steps for making a plaster mold. So this is the consistency that we're shooting for. And you'll notice that that is almost lump free, very little in the way of any kind of lumps in that. Now, just for fun, we're gonna do a quick cast into this silicone mold and we'll demold this in, a, in another video at another time. But just some quick tech casting tips. Since this is thicker than casting resin, I like to push 
put that in with my hand and again feel around in any corner areas for air bubbles and if you've got a mold where you can't do that then that's where vibrating the mold is very very helpful now i'm not going to put any reinforcement in this a part like this typically i put a little bit of burlap or maybe even a little bit of uh, chopped glass in this to reinforce it but for time's sake we're just going to put in a layer of hydrocal and call that done and you'll see on the back that's still pretty fluid it's not uh, trying to build up any kind of thickness but as this starts to set up it will get thicker and thicker and thicker gradually now this is a silicone mold so when i'm casting into a silicone mold i do not need any kind of mold release this will pop out of here just like ice out of an ice tray no problem at all and hydrocal will have hardly any effect on the lifespan of a silicone mold now polyurethane if this is a polyurethane mold if it's 74 series typically most of our 74 series uh, rubber materials don't require a, uh, a mold release either but just be aware as soon as you start adding in uh, modified gypsums as soon as you're adding acrylic modifiers and things like that that will make that a lot more aggressive and really grab onto the mold and that's where you really do see a difference between silicone and a polyurethane rubber so we still have a little bit left over so I'm going to grab another mold from my library this is one of my one of my kids faces here I think you can see that there this is a a little 7430 brush on mold so this is just a simple brush on mold with 7430 thickened with polyfiber And same same drill here again we've got a little bit of detail there and I'm just gonna shake that to get it into the detail there we go now whatever is left over in this there's just a little bit left and it is way easier to just let this set up in the bucket than to uh, try to wash this out you're going to create a much bigger mess trying to wash this out and again think do I want to spend thousands of dollars on my plumbing and that answer is probably no so um, take that set it aside let that set up in the bucket and later on you can take that break it throw it in a dumpster and you're good to go as far as your hands remember again you do not want to put your hands in the sink and destroy your plumbing so this is where the clean water comes into play Use that to clean off your, your hands. And it's a good idea if you're doing a lot of plaster work to invest in some really good hand lotion to protect your hands because that the constant exposure to gypsum, especially cement, will do incredible damage to your hands. So if you do this on a regular basis, seriously, to take care of your hands, a good idea to use some good hand lotion. Now, one, one question I always get about this in our mold making classes when people see me doing this and see this bucket with this, this accumulating plaster debris uh, is what do we do with this bucket? Because, okay, so I didn't dump it in my sink, now what do we do with this? Well, after you use this for a little bit, in fact, after a day or so, it's gonna accumulate uh, a pretty good bit of sediment down here. And what I do is I'll set this outside and let the water evaporate and then break up whatever's left over and throw it in the dumpster now depending on your budget you can just throw the whole bucket away this is all biodegradable this is all just basic basically uh, you know it came from the earth you can put it back there no problem but uh, if you want to save your bucket just let it sit let the water evaporate off and you're going to wind up with this little chunk of plaster dried plaster down at the bottom that you just break up throw it away and use the bucket again and one last little bit of housekeeping I, I haven't done it on this one but i like to label all my buckets plaster or platinum silicone or polyurethane or polyurethane resin whatever it is i'm working with that way i don't have the chance of cross-contaminating 
and using a bucket that was for something that could be a contaminant for something else. So once this becomes my plaster bucket, it's marked as such, and that way that doesn't create any problems with anything else. Now, again, I'm gonna put a link at the end of the video for the two-piece hydrocal mold, so be sure to check that out. And also, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notifications whenever we put up new content. And of course, go to our website, brickintheyard.com. That will have, there's a ton of resources on our website. In fact, if you go to the resources tab, many of you who've called us, that's where we send you first and foremost because that's where we've organized all of our video content based on subjects. So go to the resources tab, click on video library, and that'll, that'll take you to a whole index page of mold making topics. And of course, you can also check us out on Instagram at at Bitty Mold Supply. And the Instagram page, that's a good place to just see what all crazy stuff is happening. Great place to be notified about new products, uh, if things are in stock, out of stock, all the latest drama in the supply chain. So thanks again for watching. And again, be sure if you are new to this subject matter, be sure to check out the tutorial on the two-piece hydrocal mold. Very helpful information. And uh, I'll be back again, hopefully later this week, to post some material about hydrostone so we can cover some of the ins and outs of casting stone rather than hydrocal and plaster. Thanks again for watching.